Hey everyone, it's Failstream. Welcome to the Fail Vlog, Episode 2. Today we're going to be talking about some of the changes that I've made to the cape level. Before starting this editing session, I just finished Not Dracula's Castle. It is a super, super difficult hack for Super Mario World. The final boss was extremely difficult. I was a little frustrated fighting it because it took an insane number of hits. Not 13, not 14, but 15! 15! 15 hits! Why don't you check out a clip of me actually trying to beat this guy? Look at that face. That is just pain. Anyways, after not beating Dracula's castle, one of the first things that I wanted to tackle when getting into the editing of the overworld was how disjointed it was. Compared to Ozymandias and Final Flight, they're much smoother experiences. They don't feel like different sections, but they feel like one overall flowing level when one section just naturally transitions into the next one. What the current level feels like that I'm building is a bunch of different sections, different smaller sections that are just kind of slapped together. And I'd like to get a more flowing and overall cohesive feeling. So one of the, my goals for this session was specifically to remove the pipe transitions. Not that pipe transitions are, are bad in and of themselves. They do a lot of things that can be helpful, especially when you're going from overworld to subworld to overworld again, and with not much in between. So when streaming, it's kind of nice to have that little break, you know, to glance at chat. However, for this section, I don't really want them to break up that much, mainly because for the overworld, for what I'm planning on doing later on in this level, it will be a much more interesting to watch experience if the level itself doesn't have those kinds of interruptions. With that in mind, one of the first things that I did when jumping into the editing was remove those two pipes and erase that wall between these two areas so that I can come up with some ideas on how to case those two sections together. After that, I placed a few random objects and just started messing around with them. I was trying to get a feel for the space. I knew that it was going to be a somewhat difficult area to figure out because of the relatively small confinement, and I wanted to make something that actually felt like it naturally bridged the two sections together. The first viable thing that I created was a simple shell jump, going simply from one location to the next to using the shell jump, hitting an on-off switch, and immediately going to the spring section. I generally don't like this. I don't like just to put shell jumps in levels for no reason, especially just to bridge a couple of sections together. I felt like I could do something more with this area, something a little more complex, a little more interesting, maybe a little more difficult as well. Another thing that I attempted was moving the spring to the new section and then trying to do a new trick where I would use it in some way and then somehow keep it for the next section or throw it to the next section. This didn't really work out though and I felt like it would end up being a lot more convoluted than I wanted it to be. Here I attempted to figure out some way that maybe I could keep the spring from one section to the next. I tried just using a simple mold to see how the spring fell when throwing it into the one block section. It didn't quite work. Nothing I did really worked with trying to keep the spring from one section to the next, and I eventually just gave up on it. Next I tried a few more shell jump variations. Uh, the first one was a back shot over a spike staircase. I thought this was better than the simple shell jump, but it still felt lacking. The next thing I thought is that maybe I needed some kind of a uh, additional trick before the shell jump, some kind of obstacle to getting the shell in the first place. So I thought maybe you could duck under the beetle as it's on a track. However, thinking more about this, I felt like it was kind of finicky. I didn't really want to stop completely when getting to this part. I felt like that it would ruin a lot of the flow of the level, and I just wanted it to be continuous movement, from jumping to the platform to starting the trick. Here I played around with a fire flower and a claw. I was just messing around, stalling, trying to think of ideas. Sometimes I do that when making stuff in a level. 
I start creating things that probably are not going to work, but might jog some better ideas to the surface. I did kind of like this, but it was really more for a different section, maybe even a different level. I thought maybe I could use the claw's momentum when it grabbed the fire flower to put it onto a different note block. It just definitely isn't for this part, so I eventually moved on. I tried playing around with a Blowy Joey for a bit. I honestly, I don't really like how Blowy Joey's interact with the cape, but I thought I'd mess around a bit. It really didn't work out though. Played around with a flower and a seesaw for a bit. Again, I already used this in a previous section and I didn't really want to reuse it again. I was just playing around because I couldn't think of anything. I eventually came back to the shell jump. It still wasn't making me happy. I didn't really like it. It just felt so bland. However, coming back to this led me to try using a door to connect these two areas, and I found that that worked pretty well. While that did break up the level a little bit, it still felt like a continuous level to me. I was still going through doors that I could see on screen that were both connected to each other. I attempted to create a part where you'd get spin flight here, and then use precise momentum to go underneath the ceiling to keep flight, and they get normal flight and ground pound above to kill the muncher that is blocking the door. I didn't like this. There was too much you couldn't see at the top of the screen, so I eventually nixed the idea. I did like the ground pound idea though, so I tried to incorporate that in my next attempt at this section. I created a ceiling of fire flowers that would drop when you ran under, and you'd have to uh, get flight and then do a ground pound in between the fire flowers. It ended up being a little too precise for my taste, and I did not keep this iteration. Although I did like the fire flowers dropping down from the ceiling idea, I tried to keep that for my next attempt at this section. I tried to use a pow where I would throw it up underneath the fire flowers as they were falling, and then jump and spin the fire flowers off of the pow, land on the pow, and go inside of a door. I really liked this iteration, although it ended up being a little too finicky for me. I did decide that I was going to keep the POW door entry though because I liked it a lot. Next I tried doing an obstacle where I would throw the POW up through a saw, jump onto a vine, and then jump to the POW as it's falling and enter the door that way. I have also tried you know moving the saw down and then sliding under it on ice blocks. Well, I did like this idea, I just couldn't get it to work right or consistently. Finally, after all of that, I figured out a method of entering the door that I liked. I added a sideways spring on top of a skull platform and threw the POW against that to enter a door on the left side. I'm very happy with how this particular trick turned out. It was exactly what I was looking for. It felt like I had finally figured out what it was supposed to be. A little bit after that, Flips came up with this suggestion to add a cannon on the left side that shoots a sideways spring into you. Uh, I really liked the idea, and after testing it out, I found out that you could actually enter the door after ducking underneath the spring as it shot out of the cannon. I loved this, and I decided to keep it in the final version, which I'm going to show you right now. That was actually a couple years ago. I uploaded it in 2020, I think. Oh, that's awful. Despite my protestations to the contrary in that clip, I actually do like that section. And if you like it too, you should like, comment, and subscribe on this video. It took me about two hours to make, so we're looking at the semi-final version. I'm probably only going to make small edits to it in the future, if any at all. One of the nice things about the next segment is that it was fairly straightforward. It didn't take too long to figure out what I wanted to do. Most of this was due to the design space. It was a much larger space that I had to work with. I had less constraints, and there were just so many more possibilities. So as I was going into editing this, I simply just took out all of the pipe trans transitions and parts that you know made the level uh, somewhat segmented and began to figure out ways that I could connect it. One of the first things that I did here was replace the cloud platform with an exploding platform, something that would give you a time limit upon entering the part. Immediately after this, I added a door. For this door, I actually had a plan. How the next section went was that you would come out of a pipe and stomp on a bomb and then use that bomb by dropping it. By adding a door, this allows me to take the bomb that I was using at the beginning of this section and move it to the end of the previous part and bring it with me through the door and then use it. One of the pivotal decisions that I made here was deciding to use a P-switch. It just opened up a lot more design possibilities because I know I want to come back through this area moving to the left. So in order to make changes 
changes to the section and in order to make that possible without actually affecting when I come back through to the left, I needed to figure out some way to have an obstacle here without affecting any future obstacles that I make. The decision to replace the POW with the P-Switch just kind of tied everything together and allowed me to have the creative freedom that I needed to make something really interesting here. Following this up, everything just sort of fell into place. I moved the bomb to the left before the door and began just editing the parts that I had already created, moving everything into place, making sure it all works. The plan for this part was simply to spin the fire flower up as before, but this time bouncing off the P-Switch to get the height necessary to spin the fire flower all the way up. And instead of going through the pipe, I would just go underneath this part, grabbing the bomb along the way, flying above the key wall and the spike, and then going into the door before any of the bombs explode. After this I just thinned up the bomb wall a little bit and voila! Uh, here's the final edit and uh, I think it turned out pretty well. <laughs> no more launchers with springs! Well, that just about wraps up this editing session. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this content, and I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.